Hi, welcome to Go Ahead, Write Something, the podcast for writers who want motivation, the nitty gritty and more gritty about getting published and how to find joy in writing your stories and sharing them with the world. I'm Tessa Smith McGovern, author and instructor on Zoom for the Writing Institute, Sarah Lawrence College, as well as two free weekly writing sprints for the Westport Library's Westport Writes program. And I'm Patricia Dunn, a.k.a. T.M. Dunn, a novelist and writing instructor for over 20 years. And today, our guest is Barbara Josselson. Barbara Josselson is the author of five novels, The Cranberry Inn, The Lily Garden, The Bluebell Girls, The Lilac House, and The Last Dreamer. Her articles and essays appear in a range of publications, including New York Magazine, Parents Magazine, The New York Times, Westchester Magazine, WorkingMother.com, and Next Avenue, Barbara also teaches writing at the Sarah Lawrence Writing Institute and other venues, and is the founder and coordinator of the Scarsdale Library Writer Center. She and her husband live in Westchester and have three children. Thank you so much, Barbara, for joining us today. Oh my gosh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm just delighted. So Barbara, I've known you for a while, and you've had an incredible publication journey. And it's kind of, it's inspiring and it's kind of, you kind of live what I've always told writers is the big T is what it takes, tenacity. So that's what gets your work published. Can you share a little bit of your story? Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm the, um, I'm probably the, you know, the, the biggest symbol of what you're talking about because uh, it took me a really long time to get published. I was working on my first book, The Last Dreamer. Um, for literally 15 years, and not just dabbling or whatever, really, really working hard. Um, I, I, my background was as a, as a journalist, so I was learning how to be a novelist as I was writing the novel. And um, there's such a big difference between fiction writing and nonfiction writing. But um, I just knew I had a story that I wanted to tell. And I, I, I worked really hard. I tried it out. I had some readers. I got some feedback. I went back to the drawing board. A big pivotal moment was, of course, when I met you, Pat, of course. As, you, as you became my teacher. And, um, you know, it's funny how sometimes, I mean, there are things that you've said that just echo in my head. But one of the big ones I remember is that um, and which was very, very um, comforting to me was that getting published is more about persistence than talent. And I was like, shoo, that's, a, that's great. <laughs> well, you I also have, have persistence. talent, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that, was, that was when I really started to feel like, okay, this is really a novel that I'm working on. I went out looking for an agent, I think at least three rounds, three times. And, you know, and, and at one point, finally, it was done. And um, what I like to remember is that while it took 15 years to get my agent, Cynthia Manson, who's our wonderful agent, it only took six months for her to sell that book. So a lot of the prep work, a lot of the 15 years of work, you know, that went into the first part of that, I think helped, you know, make that process go a little smoother. Um, and how many agents did you submit to before? I I think that probably I went out for a few, several dozen. Mm -hmm. You know, writing under deadline is is a whole different experience for me, and I think that in some ways the first book was the most fun <laughs> because it was just open ended and um, with the dream, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. So I think that one was was it wasn't a it wasn't a business you know it wasn't right. a you know a business kind of thing i when you're on deadline you, you got to really you know you got to keep to the schedule you got to get your pages and how done. do you do that i do have do weekly write with goals others? i think I, I i have things that i need like i got i have to i mean i'll kind of you know looking out i'll be like you know this month i have to get through half the book and next month I'm going to go over that half and revise it. And the third month, I'm going to then finish it. And then I'll have the fourth month and the fifth month. So I kind of, you know, make a kind of extended guide map. For and I myself. understand that you sometimes write with other writers. Yeah, that's been really wonderful. Really, you know, that kind of came out of the pandemic. I don't know. There's something really motivating and comforting 
you know, we'll we'll connect on Zoom and then go on, you know to our own spaces. But just you know, the camera's on. Not that anybody's mm-hmm. looking at each other because we're mm-hmm. all looking at our manuscripts. But, but you're not um, alone. But you just, and then if you need to interrupt. But we don't interrupt each other that much, except to say goodbye, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, when it's time to wrap up. But somehow just knowing and that they're there. It's and, a system. Yeah, and I feel yeah. their energy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's funny, right? Because I'm not in the same room, but I feel like I am. And right. I'm really getting energy from Yeah, no, that's them, on right? Zoom. It does that. Yeah. So when you put your, you write your outline, and is that, if you're doing, a, is it a 70,000 word novel? The one I'm working, they're between 70 and Actually, the one I'm, I just finished is longer. It's a historical, but 70 to oh, 90. Oh, historical, so you switched genres a little bit. I did bit. switch yeah. genres. Yeah, I, with same editor. Um, my publisher is Bookature, which is an imprint of Hachette. Um, so it's big global company, but my imprint's kind of small, and they're based in London. You know, I love, I start, suddenly I'm using words like brilliant <laughs> when people talk about it. Brilliant, because that's what they always say. It's catching. Um, it's oh, yeah, yeah. look who I'm She's, talking yeah, to. This is English, and yeah, it's really. <laughs> And do you do it in the morning? When do you write? I need huge blocks of time. Mm-hmm. So I like, like I like to do a chapter a day, just stream of consciousness, getting the story down. You know, playing I, with it's, the characters. Yeah. How do you and, not get in your way? I'm sorry. How do you not get in your way? I don't. I don't. I, it, that's that's the a fun part is just to kind of let. The, the you know let the story play out in my head and get it down and and it's full of typos it's not even meant so to be so your inner written. critic doesn't like try to stop not you not then no, the okay. harder part is then going back and doing that and really getting it to say and then the third go round for me is more polishing so it's it's so the, the number two second draft the second is the hardest, is the hardest. One. that's so interesting yeah yeah okay well that is fascinating it's fascinating and you know you're so inspiring to so many you are inspiring to me, oh, you inspire um, me. and this, you're this as somebody also you, you teach like these so many students and i know you have some great writing prompts uh so i might even use can you share one with our listeners today so yeah i would love to um to to give you a prompt this is one i like a lot it seems to evoke a lot of really interesting reactions so the prompt is to start a scene or start an essay that includes the phrase, this is what you need to know to understand me. And it can be first person, or you can put those words into um, a character's voice. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'm going to use that. Barbara, it's been so wonderful having you. And for our listeners, this has been Barbara Jocelyn, and she's an amazing author of five wonderful books. You have to look for her website. Will you tell us your website? Yes, it's um, www.barbarajocelyn.com. Jocelyn, J-O-S-S-E-L-S-O-H-N dot com. And there you'll see books and me and, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. As, as much, her website's incredible, like her books. So I want to uh, thank you again. Thank you, Tessa. And, and we also want to thank our wonderful engineer, Travis. Thank you so much. Fun. Thank you to the Westport Library for hosting this podcast and for all those who are listening. This has been Go Ahead, Write Something. Remember, writing can be hard, but you don't have to do it alone. And we hope you'll join us next time.